to help to manage, maintain, and operate their business. But it's not just simply a transaction. It's truly, you know, a partnership. And that's where this slide kind of ties into, in the world today, information, processes, supply chain, what's the most relevant that you, thing that you hear today? How do you get product? How do you get something? Like what's the most relevant thing today of how you do E-commerce, right? Yeah. Pretty, I mean, that, that's, that's very common. Amazon, where do you go? I go to Amazon. So yes, we have e-commerce platform, but we've never steered away from the power of presence, the ability to be in front of your customer to help to manage. Because what Amazon can't do is support their labor, right? Can Amazon manage a process for a customer? Can Amazon tell you when you run out of something, um, order it for you, bring it to you, put it away for you? Not yet, right? No, maybe they'll do it someday. But no. um, not yet. And that's really the value of is understanding what that, that process looked like, that supply chain, and then putting procedures and processes and solutions in place to be able to support those functions, at, in addition to getting that product to the end user. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? So here's some ways that we do that. Okay, here's some solutions, information. Um, we can do this through the, the data, the technology that we, we gather um, by selling product to customers. I mean, data, what, what can you do with data? Just about anything, right? Once you have information, what do you do with information? If a customer is buying something on a consistent or regular basis, well, now you have information that you can use to be more efficient or help the customer be more efficient, right? So they're buying something or, or a handful of products consistently from you. Well, instead of even going through that process and saying, hey, I need this, can you get it to me? Well, what if we did it for them, right? Um, now, getting that product to them, we have different types of solutions to manage that process, manage that information, manage um, those functions. The vending is one of them. Anybody ever seen a vending machine that dispenses industrial products? No. 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 Does it seem crazy? No. Kind of cool. Why? I mean, if you need something, right? So let's say you're performing a job, you're a production facility, you're a government facility, you're FAU maintenance, you need, you need tools, brushes, paint, whatever, on a daily basis to perform your job. What's the most important thing you can't take back? Your time. Your time. So if you always had access to it, it's providing a, a, a functional process to be very efficient, right? Well, that's one thing that we try to put in place for our customers is, is that, is those type of solutions. Um, Benstock, where we go out there physically and manually check it, manage it, scan it, and, and fulfill it for our customers. On-site, um, that's actually being present in our customer facility if they're large enough. So we're, we're in there, we're managing their, process, their products for them. Uh, turnkey solutions, they don't, they don't have to worry about it. They, they don't utilize their labor to stock it, receive it, put it away, et cetera. And then truly integrated where we do not only manage the supplies, we manage the purchase orders. We may manage more functions outside of just getting that product there. So this goes into some of those processes um, and how we try to bring that, that value, that efficiency to the customer, to the end user um, by utilizing information that we can gather to support their business. Um, this, this is one thing that we've implemented recently is Express to where, what's the, uh, Amazon has the, the drone thing, I don't know if it's fully implemented, but where you can get it what, like their thing is you can get it the same day I think, right? Well that's what we're trying to accomplish too um, because there are times where people need it right now, right? Where instead of them going out to get it, or maybe them knowing they can get it, but it's just another layer of bringing efficiencies to our customer's business. So now we have this express model where they can see right now, it's available, it's down the street, it's an emergency, I can get it. And this is uh, another thing that we did to kind of create more visibility for our customers. So let's say they have a vending machine, right? Well, how do you know what's in there? 
how does the customer know what's in there without physically going there, right? Well, what if they had access to see it and they knew what was in the machine? And that's what we try to create. So now you have 360 degrees of your business. You have full visibility of what's in your facility, what we're managing. If we don't, can I get it? How quickly can I get it? Um, information, right? The more information we can provide to a customer, the more efficient they can be to, to do their job, perform their functions. And that drills into different you know, areas to be more efficient and visibility. Here's another um, uh, opportunity to create a, a, a different solution for a customer. So outside of vending, another way to improve processes is, is managing. Right, manual, we call it manually, but scanning it, checking it, um, bringing in different layers that may support that business depending on that need, right? depending on their current process. And um, there's not always one perfect solution for every customer or every product or every operation. So this allows us to see it, whether it's automated and or manual process through scaled systems, and we have full visibility when they need something. Um, through scanners, where we go out there physically and scan it when it's low and it hits a min-max level or something. Um, and, and different, um, we have RFID system now too, um, and a, a, a laser system where it, it registers how much is in that bin. Again, just a way to understand when there's a need and, and trying to, to tie that need in as efficient a manner as possible. This just goes through different of the of the different bins and systems and operations we have. Um, I want to pause for a second. Who has questions? First of all, I don't want to keep you all the time. I'm just curious. <clears throat> so you guys don't utilize like uh, Amazon at all, or do, you, do we? Do we, you guys use, use Amazon at all for any of your uh, sure. transportation Shh. stuff? For transportation for products? Yeah, because I, I heard you, you said you have your own trucks. So I'm yeah, not sure if you guys. The deliveries through Amazon or no I mean have we purchased from Amazon certainly I mean if there's an immediate need and we're fulfilling a customer it's an emergency that's one of the services we may offer if we can't get it right now mm -hmm. or something we may not classify as a core product uh, that we get on a regular basis we may buy it from and sell it to a customer um, I think on the flip side does Amazon use Fastenal um, and that answer is yes uh, we actually have our machines in I think it's now 60% of all the Amazon DCs in the nation. Why do you think they do that? One of the largest companies in the nation right now, why do you think they use us? Because you're efficient? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are, our value is being an expert in that inventory world and bringing solutions to, you know, tie it all together to, to help our customers be efficient. So there's stuff that we sell in the gloves, glasses, just general type products that a warehouse would use. But the value that we can bring to manage the process far exceeds them taking off the shelf and ordering it, bringing more in, putting it away, going to a supervisor to get it. It's all transparent. And the whole process is turnkey. Go ahead. So are your customers all just businesses? So 89% of a business is yes, is B2B, is end users, from government to manufacturing to OEM to anything, you name it. I mean, you use FAU, FAU maintenance facilities. I mean, they use Fastenal for Ozidens and stuff they need to do jobs. But anybody, I mean, you, we sell paper towels, we sell office supplies. You know, what, what facility isn't using that? You know, so anybody traditionally you know, could be our customer. Um, we don't promote ourselves as retail, we don't, we do support you know, cash customers in that local market, but that's not how we promote ourselves. That's not our value. We're not an ace hardware, you know. What else? That was a good question. Go ahead. Um, where is Fastenal, like, headquartered? Winona, Minnesota. Winona, Minnesota? Yeah. Yeah. It, Fastenal is one of basically. Not a whole lot there other than Fastenal, one bowling alley, a couple, couple pubs. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Has 
school to take better school buildings is all over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, you know, I, I don't want to get, I think last time we did this, we got real deep in and we kind of ran out of time. We got here. We good? Yeah, we got a little bit of time. So I just want to give it an opportunity to allow you guys to ask me questions, whether it's Fastenal, whether it's business related, whether it's leadership. I just want to leave an open forum for you guys to have the opportunity to pick my brain. Go ahead. I have a question in commerce on B2B. Uh, so is there always a transparent pricing, even if you deal with big corporations, let's say you can get like a different quote or how, how does it work in, in terms of a B2B? Good question. So I'm gonna give you an example here real quick. All right, so here's an example of products that we sell on duct tape that's two inches wide, right? Different types, different brands, different thicknesses, and you see a price there, right? So that's what we classify as wholesale, retail, whatever you want to call it. Now, does a, does a customer that's set up with Fast and All receive that same price? No. No, we work on discount structure. We work on core prices, we work with the customer on market need, market demand, um, high volume items that they use on a regular basis. That's where you really tie it together and work directly with that end user to ensure that they have the confidence that they're getting something at a competitive price, and if it's not something they use on a regular basis, they're still getting a disconstruction to ensure they can perform their job. But anybody can go on our website and get this. Yeah. Usually with the B2B uh, transactions happen through the website or different? Do you have an app for it? No, it's common. Um, it, it, it is, uh, that's a big, that's a big one that we've really been talking about a lot. Not only for our customers, but for, for our employees. Is we've grown very fast uh, in the last 50 years. And there are things that we're extremely good at, things that we need to continue to catch up with. Uh, growth is painful at times, but growth is a good thing. Um, technology, like we, we've always had e-commerce, but we never really pushed it. We never really used it as uh, a resource, truly a resource for our customers. It was just wasn't great, so we really redeveloped that. And that next step was developing apps. Uh, we rolled out iPads for our employees so they can use those to be more efficient. Scanning devices to be more efficient. Um, a platform where they can essentially do everything they need to do without coming to the store to support our customers and support their business. Go ahead. Um, so it sounds like you guys use like a lot of data and stuff. What do you use to like collect that data and analyze it? Um, so our, our software is point of sale. So when we do transactions, we sell stuff to customers, products to customers. We're capturing that transaction on our platform. All right, so from there, we can export it um, into Excel. I don't know who's familiar with Excel. I still teach that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. That, that's, I live in that world. So, all joking aside, I, I mean, not because I, I like Excel, and that's what I was taught a lot. Like, it truly is very functional in my environment, in our, our environment, where myself, my bosses, anybody in our business is touching Excel at some point, usually during the day. So it's extremely relevant. So I know it may be painful to you guys at times, but I am telling you it's a very powerful tool that you can utilize personally and in, and in business. Go ahead. What kind of jobs are you looking for right now? And, and what does a traditional traditional career look like at your yep. like, career path? Very good question. In fact, let's see if I know this. Good job. I'm remember what I called it. Um, I'll see if I can find it later. Um, so sales support part time is what you commonly see. Um, that is something I, I, I have posted on a fairly regular basis, just about every other week. Um, I'm always looking for great people. We're a growth company, so to fulfill those growth needs, to fulfill promotions that we've done. Um, but obviously there's turnover at times where you gotta, you gotta fulfill those, those opportunities as well. 
So sales support is a, a, a title that you'll see. What do you think that means? What does that mean to you? Building a relationship with the customer. Okay. What else? Customer service. Okay. You said it's called sales support. Sales support. I would assume it's working along with someone who, because you guys said you have physical locations, right? Yes. So, yeah, I would assume that it's working with those sales associates as a system. Yes, supporting the function of the sales? Yeah. What does that mean? Like if, huh? Like if somebody asks for something in person, you would go to that. Whatever. I mean, it's supporting the function of that business, essentially, right? Sales is business. You gotta have sales keep the doors open, right? So we really just kind of, it's a, such a generic term that we use. And I argued, well, that it, I, why? I mean, people get scared of sales, right? Are you, do you like the term sales? No. You're an MIS. Most of you probably hate it. I hated that term before I got into the sales environment. Um, but I think it's a preconceived notion that, first of all, sales is relevant no matter what you do. Sales is communication. I think that's a very important thing to understand um, that you walk away from this, is I was not the person that wanted to be in sales ever. I never wanted to go in that environment. I always felt that was not for me, but yet here I am today as a district sales manager, and it's extremely relevant day in and day out. And I'm just simply communicating, whether it's to my employees, to my customers, whatever it may be. You know, so sales isn't pushing a vacuum to someone that doesn't need it. It's communication. Okay, so that, that's, that's the sales piece of it that I don't want you to be scared of. But the support function is, is support, supporting the business. Okay, and that's operations, that's logistics, that's receiving, that's helping customers, that's making deliveries, that's supporting the business, that's building a business, that's feeling a sense of empowerment to where you're a piece of that business, right? So we have a very entrepreneurial spirit in our business and we're looking for leaders to, to promote within our business. And we want our employees to feel empowered. We want them to feel like it's not this box, it's not just putting stock away, um, it's what you make of it. You know, that's really the, the feeling, the culture we've created uh, within our business. So sales, yes, communication, yes. But as far as pathways, there are sales pathways where it could be sales associate, outside sales, account specialist, general manager, which is, General manager is supposed to be the best salesperson in the branch, right? They're the ones teaching their their employees how to properly communicate with the customers, okay? But there's also operations, right? And we've, as we've grown as a company, we've de developed more and more of those operational functions, branch operations manager. Um, I have several now, and I want every single one of my stores to have an operations manager. It's extremely relevant as you get bigger, you need somebody inside that can manage those processes, right? So people can be out and support the customers, support the market. Um, so you have operational, you have project management, which kind of operations, project-based, um, supporting a large customer project, start, finish, implementation, move on to the next one. Um, you have lean solutions people, that's implementation too. Or there's Six Sigma, right? Looking at processes and improving those processes. You have finance, you have leadership. <laughs> You got management, you got logistics. What am I missing? IT. IT, computer support. Um, marketing, e-commerce. Um, and it doesn't stop. I mean, those, those roles, when I first started, we didn't have all those roles. It was very, this is the way you go, that's it. You gotta go this way. Well, now it's kinda like this, or this, or this. You know, and that's just, it's just growth. And realizing that we have to continue to evolve and embrace change at times, you know, and support different aspects and functions of our business. So it's not just sales. I want to be very clear. It is business. It's running a business and every aspect of that, that part of that piece. So as a district sales manager, what's like a typical day for you? Is it a lot of traveling? Is it a lot of kind of in the office? So for me, um, I try, so I put a schedule out on a monthly basis to my branches, and I try to be at that store on that day. So for me, my schedule will be set for next month. Most of it's set, but I'll, I'll send it out to my team this weekend so they know where I'm going to be at. And I'm a support function for them. 
you know, I'm not going in there to, you're not doing this, I should have to. And you set the expectations to be completed, they're not completed, then they're not performing, right? I'm, I'm an extension. So I want to go out there, I want to support the business. What can I do? What do you need? You know, how do we continue to grow the business? Where can I plug in to support you? That's ultimately what I try to accomplish. You know? But there's there's a the flip side to it. You know, it's dealing with customers at the time that you have to put out a fire uh, or make a resolution. Um, recruiting, hiring, firing. I mean it's it's every aspect. I wear a lot of hats when it comes to running and operating a very large business. And my business is over $30 million a year. You know, so there's a lot of responsibility in that. Go ahead. Do you have any internship opportunities? Okay. Yes, we do. Good question. Um, our internships are part-time. It's a sales support position that's part-time that we can classify as an internship. Now here's the reality in our role of an internship. I can do an internship, I'm happy to do it for students that need class uh, credit, okay? And we can have a start and a finish and we can check the boxes off for completion. And I've done that and it's, it's great. But also understand that our part-time sales support is essentially an internship. And what I mean by that is everything you're learning in an internship, you're learning in that part-time sales support job. You're going through the same trainings. You're gonna be plugged in the same way you're going to learn the same aspects of that business, it just simply may not be worth checking the box of to submit a packet. Okay, but there's really no difference. Okay. What else? Go ahead. Where's your local branch located? Boynton. It was <laughs> seven minutes away from here. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Rogers, Rogers Circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you got Pompano, which is about 10 minutes south of here. North would be what two West Palm stores, and then keep going further south and north. Go ahead. So when it comes to your back end, how do you feel about your infrastructure, and are you finding, or is your company trying to find interns to help better secure it, better uh, manage it, or anything like that? Securing what? I'm sorry, I missed the first part. Like um, since I'm interested in security. I want to uh, learn from a bigger company to teach me the ropes and get me uh, better acquainted with systems like that. They're about IT security, right? Correct. Phishing and all that, that, that stuff. More like um, making sure things are up to date, uh, making sure things are encrypted where it's supposed to be, yeah. making sure, you know, we talk about So our computer functions responsibilities is at our corporate <laughs> office location, which is in Minnesota. Um, generally speaking, we don't have the software, the computer, um, IT specific people in our local regions and districts. Um, the technology piece is the automation that I showed you before, some of the processes we have. Okay. That's the technology piece. Yeah. And would there uh, be uh, any internships working in, in this, something like that related to IT, or is it just like uh, sales? Um, from a branch level, yes and no. Um, we have an e-commerce guy, so that's the extent of really the, the software platform, um, e-commerce platform. Um, he started at a branch part-time, worked his way up, and now he oversees the e-commerce platform for our region. Um, but as far as IT security specific, no. Computer support functions, again, a lot of those would be corporately um, held. Um, but I mean, you never know. I mean, the e-commerce position was posted and created for potential an individual. It was very good at that e-commerce world. Okay. Go ahead. Um, how would you classify and differentiate um, fast enough from any other business that's doing courses and? Sure. Um, still good. I'll give you an example. Who, who would you say is a competitor of ours? Okay. Anybody have an idea? Office Depot. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? What makes this different? In your opinion? I 
you say that um, your repertoire, how you can check out on the theme, like new more stuff, and you can help them put it in and take out stuff like that? Yep. Yeah, solutions, right? Yeah. Efficiencies, processes. Um, really, the biggest thing that differentiates us is the people. You know, we're only as good as the people we have in our business. And our people is what brands us, markets us, touches our customers, manages the inventory for them, brings the solutions to the forefront so they can understand and realize our value. You know, there's plenty of other people out there in the world the market, like an Amazon, that have the ability to get something to you pretty fast. But again, what's what's the next step? Can, can they support your business beyond that? You know, is that is that as efficient as it, as it gets, or is there a more efficient way to do that or something, or get that product to you? So it really comes down to the people, and then the infrastructure we have, which is we have behind it, to be able to push those things through to implementation. And it's one thing to say you can do it, but can you implement it? Mm -hmm. So as far as fast enough, and I know that you mentioned that the majority of the transactions are business to business. Mm -hmm. um, it seems kind of unique in that sense. So is there a direct competitor to Fastenal? Because Home Depot and, and Office Depot, Lowe's, they're more focused on that. You and I could go into the store and like, purchase yep. roll of tape. So is there anybody that's in your lane or is Fastenal unique in that sense? Um, does anybody specifically swim our lane? I'm a little biased towards that. No. <laughs> but do do competitors have the ability or have access, I should say, to similar resources? <clears throat> yes. Right? So Granger. I, mean, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Granger, but they would be a competitor of ours, national, national competitor, that has vending platform, that has bin stock solutions, that has you know all types of different products that we sell. But again, the biggest difference between us and others is the people, you know, the infrastructure, our reach. Um, Granger, which is large enough from a revenue standpoint, which we're cashing on pretty quickly, they don't have 3,500 3, stores. They may have a couple hundred, okay? So from a vending standpoint, we have 100,000 vending machines. And the entire industrial market as a whole, I think the last time I heard it was like less than 10,000. As a whole, outside of fast and all, right? So it's, it's not only about getting a product, but it's about executing it. Right? You can put something out there, but if you can't fulfill that, what good is it? Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Good question. Go ahead. If we're interested in the part time position, where do we and how do we apply for it? Excellent question. Uh, Fastenal.com, which I am on. I'm blind here. There it is. So you go here, search jobs. What's the zip code here? 33431. Yeah. What's the same line? Like So that's a, the Boga Boynton store. That's that sales, sales support position. And then Fort Lauderdale, which I believe is the Davy location for that one. And then West Palm Beach. So you got three surrounding stores that I positioned posted for. What else? Any questions for me outside of Fastenal that you guys want to know? Go ahead. Um, so